You're already here. You know what? Join early. You, you might need to be in for this. Oh, was I, su I was supposed to wait. Yeah, you're supposed to wait, but that's okay. <laughs> I can go back. No, no, finish. no, stay. Just stay. Because you, you can hear. Hey, tell me if you can hear this. First off, let me. Uh, I can. Can you hear me if you need to? Yeah, I can hear you. You sound fine. Okay, cool. Okay, can you see me and everything? And I can. Yeah. Everything is good. But I'm sorry. I just uh, messed up, interrupted your trolling of someone there. No, no, there. you're not. You're going you're gonna to be I here I thought for... you had like a, you know, in StreamYard, they have like a room where they yeah, keep yeah. you in. <laughs> they don't do that here. It just says admit or deny. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, let, tell me if you can hear this uh, real quick. Tell me if you can hear this. I see dead people. Can you hear that? You can hear that? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I just want to make sure. It's a great quote. It's, uh, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. <laughs> All right. Now, let me do this. By the way, you have no part in this. Colonel Kurtz has no part in this. I just want to be clear. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I disavow everything that will happen in the next let's, hour. Let's just do a blanket. Let's, yeah, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I can't believe you've been at this for like hours and hours, dude. You do long streams. I do long streams. That's not the only. Never mind. I won't make that joke. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, did it not go through? Is their phone turned off? Wait, 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 wait. I might have to do it this other way. Let's see. Plus, because I have a Mexican phone. Let's see. Plus. Yeah, it should go through. If not, I'll call on the. I think their phone's like dead. Okay. Are you prank I'm calling gonna... someone? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now give me one more try. You won't be able to hear this one now, but you're fine. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay. Enter a name or a number. All right, let's see. The person you are calling cannot accept calls at this time. We're sorry for any inconvenience wow. this may cause. They can't accept calls at this time. I think they legit. One of my enemies is like completely hey, broke. Bills. Yeah, they said they were going to like end my career and kill me and all this shit. And, uh, you know, obviously those things didn't happen. And uh, today they announced they, they were taking a step back from streaming. They weren't making enough money to stream uh, as a living anymore. Oh, they, I saw something about that, but Tharps, I don't even remember who yeah, it was. Yeah, they went to this okay. poetry slam to read my tweets out, and they thought this was this going to be this epic on, and they made five total dollars off <laughs> this. And then some guy, their last pay pig, but or, I don't like that word, by the way, their last contribution uh, contributor. Um, I don't like using that word. Their last contributor um, – offered to to loan her some money but was like you know when are you gonna pay me back and i think he was trying to fuck too or whatever uh and well you know i go i mean i wouldn't loan the bitch any money either if she wasn't gonna fuck me like why uh but <laughs> anyway um so no offense sorry to talk rude in front of a lady but uh no you're fine i expect it i expect it here. all right good uh <laughs> now anyway so she said no fuck off and so she's minus 138 dollars in the bank uh and her dad's got to go to court on the fifth and he's going to divorce court on the 18th where they announced probably... all of this yeah they announced all this yeah they're probably trying to i think i can see bucks. why their uh, their podcast is not doing well <laughs> yeah i can see why too uh by the way welcome to the show let me read these out real quick because yeah yeah go for it You're fine. we are what i don't know what 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 is the number away? I just did the fucking math. Uh, forty six oh one away from ninety one straight kill stream goals met in a row. Now not ninety one days in a row, ninety one straight mm -hmm. shows in a row. Powerchat dot live slash the route for tour. Killstream dot live slash tip. Do Let's see. <laughs> Dollar sign sunset squad on Cash App. Rumble rants. I think I read them correctly. And you can use entropy now as well. Uh, powerchat.live slash the Ralph door. Yes, I did say that. Okay. So we have plenty of show left. Uh, let me tweet out that you're on the show, actually. 
Yeah, uh, go for it. And they don't like it when you post links because they're fucking pieces I know, that's of what shit. I heard. Yeah, it hurts your algorithm. It's fucking horseshit, honestly. Uh, but uh, let me go ahead and I'll quote tweet from earlier uh, because I did uh, put out a tweet earlier. Uh, and let's see. I spelled your name right this time, too. You did? Did I, did I get any points for that or what? Absolutely. <laughs> Are you getting feedback when you hear me? Should I? Uh, am I good? Uh, I was hearing something for a minute there, but if it's cool no, for y'all. You should be fine. I, I think I, okay. I had your mic too loud. Do you sound, does it sound oh. better now? Yeah, I don't hear it anymore. Okay, we're good. Okay, yeah, your, your mic was just too loud. Uh, okay, and then what's your Twitter again? Colonel... It's Colonel Kurtz 99. Just like the full Colonel? <laughs> yeah. It's not very uh it's not very catchy or easy. It's for a little people long. Yeah. Well, I mean, mine's the <laughs> Ralph Rator, okay? So I guess I can't talk too much shit. Uh okay. But it makes sense. If people don't know Apocalypse now, then it makes absolutely no sense to them. So that is yeah. a problem. I thought about like I thought about changing it, but then at that point. I did have a number of people who knew me that way, and I was like, uh. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not the best idea. <laughs> I'll give you some free advice here. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> so last time we were here, we talked about my uh, sleepy appearance uh, with Rakeda. Of course, I was really tired. I've had a couple other sleepy nights uh, since then. So, uh, you know, fell off a little bit, I guess you could say. Fair to say. But I'm back on uh the old wagon there here go ahead uh, welcome back thank you i appreciate that grace is a used up slag you on the other hand would oh, wow i said grace is a grace thorpe is a used up slag you on the other hand would as and by the way you revealed your age last time but how old you told me but i forgot i'm almost i turned 44 not too long from now i know people i know it's hard to believe and i'm not bragging on myself no but, i mean uh, i ain't gonna lie you look good for 44 like i'm not trying to hit on you but like yeah like wow I appreciate you. uh you look better than grace thorpe at 21 years old like i'm not kidding uh and i, I don't know who that is oh yeah that's right that's your like enemy that's who the broke bitch yeah screaming. who can't okay. even pay her phone bill anymore yeah that that's who that is um so i don't know what press one if she looks better than grace thorpe her at 44 you set grace the bar so yeah. low. press no. one if she looks better than grace thorpe at 21 press two if she does not and we'll and we'll oh take a vote God. here in chat usually we do smash or pass but i don't do that with guests if you've officially been on the show as a female mm -hmm. i feel it's inappropriate uh to do a smash or pass but if you've never been on the show then then i, I would have done one before i would have done one but uh that's a role that i have on the kill stream Basically, I'm getting we, some great ideas from you for my own. Yeah, program. basically, we all ones in the chat, by the way. Basically, we sexualize all women pretty much on the show. Uh, but if they've been on the program, I refuse to do a, an actual smash or pass uh, because I just I made that rule. Because you, you know, are you know. one of the most gallant gentlemen right. on the internet. Right. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's true. After they've been on the show, can't do it Base anymore. Friend sent two dollars on Rumble. But. Yo, you won the poll. This broad is All one right. of my favorite guests. Make sure she links her shit. But <laughs> Base Fran just said, yo, this broad is one of my favorite guests. Make sure she links her shit. Well, you know what? That's kind of It's all Colonel Kurtz 99. I'm gonna so put Yeah, it's on my Twitter right now. If you just go to my Twitter. So like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, just put in Colonel Kurtz, like the character, Apocalypse Now. Look it up. Colonel Kurtz 99, all lowercase. That's all right. me. Now also let me put you back on screen. And thank you. And that's very nice of him. Yes, it was. And we're even closer to the goal. It's nicer for him to give me money, actually. But uh, you won the. You're poll. so much better at making money than I am. I have to say, <laughs> like I feel like there's, I, I've well, definitely my strategy is lacking. I did a to project you. with Grace last year, and you know we we used to do this thing. She was my protege, basic basically, and she turned on. Uh -huh. me. And you know she's this young twenty and one year old Catholic thing. I had her in the Catholic school school girl dress, uh, singing Billy Joel. You know. Um, how how does the song uh, go? I can't remember. Uh, fuck, what is that song? What is that Billy Joel song? Um, it goes, "Come out, Virginia, don't make me wait." You Catholic girl, do you don't know Billy Joel? Do I you? don't. God, I know us. like the a few songs. Let's see. <laughs> we didn't start the fire. That's a good song. <laughs> a smaster thirty three sent one dollars on Rumble. Hey baby, you into slightly overweight skinheads? Thirteen years your junior. 
Only the good die young. So anyway, she used to come on here and we would do dances. Uh, Assmaster said, hey, baby, you into slightly overweight skinheads, 13 years your junior. I don't know if she is or not. Um, not my usual demographic. Not your usual but demo, it. but, you know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> this is not, It wasn't a no. Um, okay, now, so we did this thing. She was my protege, basically. And I was trying to, you know, help her get started in the business. We had a lot of fun on the show, actually. Then she stabbed mm -hmm. me in the back. There's this thing called the Ralph Curse. I don't know if you heard of it before, but uh, people who stab me in the back, bad things tend to happen to them. Uh, and it does, it really usually has nothing to do with me. It's just like bad Divine things. justice. Yeah, it's just like basically. bad shit happens to them. I, I don't, like, it's not usually something I did. It's just bad shit happens to them. And so Nick Ricada, actually, me and him had a huge beef. Uh, and he used to be a major guest on the show for like years. And we had a beef and we buried the hatchet actually uh -huh. and got back but on the same page there was still page. that karma that bad karma well hanging some over people him. said that the right. ralph curse still hit him because it was like <laughs> even though we buried the hatchet that it still hit him I, I didn't say that by the actually i did say that that very first night just the first super chat that was mean i mean it sounds like a logical conclusion it, but to. it was almost like man damn it still hit him and i was trying to uh, avoid it from hitting him but um but some good news has come his way uh he got his kids back yesterday and i saw you speculate on twitter I don't remember if we talked about this last time or not, or if the cocaine test had come out last time or not. Well, I think that we talked maybe briefly about the, yeah, it was like the, the nine-year-old kid that had tested positive for like some kind of significant levels of cocaine. Yeah, it was like right? 5,000 nanograms or some shit uh, of cocaine, which is like, um, basically you would be, have to be either a fairly heavy daily user or like a really heavy weekend user uh, to have those levels of cocaine in your system as a nine-year-old girl. Now, I speculated that that was unlikely uh, to be an accurate test, right? Uh, I just didn't sound right to me. Uh, I didn't know any nine-year-old girls who snorted cocaine at all much less uh, that would snort that amount of cocaine. I have known women who've snorted that amount of cocaine, uh, for <laughs> sure, but uh, not- It would be pretty bizarre. It'd be pretty bizarre, It would yeah. be pretty bizarre. Uh, and Nick disputed the test, I disputed the test, everybody disputed the test. Well, not everybody. Some people like still believe it, actually. Uh, but anybody with a brain uh, disputed the test because, I mean, it just doesn't make any fucking sense, right? um so anyway and there were even and if you remember too there were even people floating this theory that he was intentionally dosing the kid yes Nick was yes to out treat of therapy. her adhd yes, yes right? which is insane right. like i mean come on dude like he's intentionally dosing his nine nine-year-old now again he's allegations I, you know i'm not saying anything about him but if he's dosing himself like i you know whatever um dosing your children with cocaine i mean that's uh, pretty whacked out. I would say if you're doing that, that, that would probably signify some mental uh, problems you might need to get committed for, right? Like, uh, that was something that came from Kiwi Farms, and I was just like, yeah, of course, he's dosing his nine-year-old daughter with enough cocaine to fucking, you know, sink Columbia off into the ocean. Is it by the ocean? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying, right? Like, it didn't make, any, it didn't make any sense to me. Well, yesterday, he got his kids back. Uh, now, of course, he still got the the charges. Uh, I think they've offered him some plea deals. I don't I don't expect him to go to jail, really. All these people bang for their blood. They want the body cam footage, and and they they want him in jail, and they're so pissed he got his kids back. And mm. how did he get his kids back? Did his grand Did his parents had to move back in and all this shit? They're just mad, basically. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? I saw you put out a tweet that said basically what I just said. Um, like, how could that test have been accurate uh, if he was able to to get, to get his nine year old daughter and the rest of his kids back um, yesterday? Uh, how could that have been accurate? Yeah, I mean, I came into this not really knowing Rakeda. I'd only watched occasionally some of his Amber Heard Johnny Depp coverage, his live streaming, and then he had been on my show on a twenty four hour stream actually that I did. <laughs> But uh, I've done some he, of those. He a doll will set just, one dollar on one sec, one sec, oh, let's When is yeah, the yeah. Colonel going to co-host a movie night and do a full commentary collab? <laughs> I think the people when is want Colonel going to co-host a movie night and do a full commentary collab? I think the people want it. Yeah, maybe you're going to have to be my new protege uh, because the last one, uh, I mean, you said you wanted to learn how to make money on the internet. The last one didn't want to learn because she's broke minus one thirty eight in the bank now. So. Uh, you know, maybe maybe we'll have to start having, having you on more often. Now. I would love to learn. Okay. I would love to learn. Right. Seriously. Okay. Well, so I'm serious too. 
Uh, now, maybe we will do, actually. It would have to be Apocalypse Now, I would assume. Sure. Uh, right? Uh, on, yeah. But, you know, they told me on Robot Streamer, where we usually do our movie nights, that I can't... Uh, they're getting reports and stuff. A-Log, they're trying to, like, get my movie nights fucked off. But I was told that Vaughn TV didn't give a fuck and that I could do them on Vaughn TV. So that we could just watch Apocalypse Now. On, You're like on a Von wanted TV. man. There's like no place that's safe for you except what, yeah. Rumble? Well, yeah. Rumble even won't allow me to play Apocalypse Now, right? Because it's so copyrighted and shit. Like, oh, it's like, the copyright you know, stuff. Okay, I got you. You know what? You. And yeah, I yeah. talked to the boss in Odyssey. They're going to set. Well, I won't spoil it, but um, I'll talk to him again tonight. Um, but um, white labeling is what they call it. Uh, but um, I won't spoil the surprise. Uh, but me and Julian are still cool in case anybody wondering about the Odyssey stuff. Uh, talked to him last night. Uh, for all the A-logs out there, fuck Smaster you. Master 33 uh, cent $1 on Rumble. They think we're not friends anymore. Hey, Colonel, what would you call the Flintstones if they were black? What would you call the Flintstones if they were black? I just got a super chat saying that. <laughs> is he going to Is he gonna answer? Tell me the punchline. No, he's, he, he, supposed he, to you're supposed to answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I am on the edge of my seat, though, to hear... The, uh, the punchline. Yeah, tell me the punchline because I really don't know. <laughs> but the first movie, uh, I don't know if you can do it tomorrow night, but if not, uh, maybe next week or something. Uh, we'll have yeah, to, absolutely. We'll have, would be, I think that we'll would be funny. We'll have to do Apocalypse uh, Now since that seems to be one of your specialties. Um, and the 70s, uh, the auteur era uh, is actually my favorite era. Early from, Coppola. Yeah, it's great. Yes, it's yes, great. yes. Of course, I'm a huge Godfather 1 and 2 fan. I guess every guy is. Unless if they're a real man, if you're a real man, act like a man. Why don't you act like a man? Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, the whole Coppola uh, catalog. Well, maybe not the whole Coppola catalog. The early stuff. Yeah. And so I, you stuff. know what? I actually think that making Apocalypse Now it like did something to him psychologically, and that's yeah. why his movies after that kind of suck. Generally not. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. But that's okay. Well, if you know anything about the filming of that movie, it was uh, quite difficult. Well, you do. <laughs> Yeah, but in general, like the audience, they should look it up yeah. should, because it's notorious. It is notorious yes. in the history of cinema movie making as like one of the, if not the worst movie making experiences in terms of like all the shit that was going wrong and how they really yes. did kind of go crazy. Martin Sheen had a heart attack at age 36. Yes. <laughs> yes, he crazy. did. Uh, he almost died. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, <laughs> and they were filming out in the middle of the jungle and shit. Yeah, it was... Uh, if you don't know about the making of Apocalypse Now, you should know. I agree with that because, like, it's one of the craziest uh, things in history. What's your coolest factoid before we get into the drama, more drama stuff? Uh, what's your coolest factoid about Apocalypse Now? Well, Besides I mean, the one man, you there's, said. So many, there's so many of them, but I think one of the things that is would be really shocking to audiences today is that there's actual animal sacrifice at the end of the film. You see a a bull or a calf killed and it is actually killed and so yes. what was going on is there were natives mm -hmm. living around here um we're talking about natives is like in the jungle right yes, and there yes. were natives living in the area where they were filming and these natives actually had these animal sacrifice ceremonies and so when coppola started using some of these natives as extras in his movie you know they became friendly and then they invited them to watch these animal sacrifice ceremonies and so when you see at the end, when you see that animal being killed, like it's literally happening. Now I understand none of us like to see animals, you know, get killed and, and what have you, but I'm saying that is something that yeah, today I like to see them on shocking. the plate already. Like I, I don't need to <laughs> see that, right? You know what I mean? Like that's I, hypocrisy, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. true. You're right. Yeah, I don't like seeing them killed, but when they're cooked <laughs> up on my plate, you know, that's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there was another movie somebody wanted me to watch and they're like, um, there's like five like actual animal sacrifices during this movie. It was Ass Master, actually, the guy who's been I was gonna say it was a cannibal holocaust. But yeah, yeah, it yeah. was actually. Was it? Yes, actually, that's exactly <laughs> the film it was. And I was like, dude, I'm not watching this. What the fuck? It's a fucked up movie. Yeah, yeah he, of course he always suggests the most fucked up movie. Yeah, um, yeah. But the Ricada stuff. So you were on a yes. uh, you were doing a twenty four hour stream, is that what you're saying? Are yeah, he... and so he came on and everything went fine. And but I, I my point is that I I don't really know him. And so it's been interesting to me as somebody who doesn't know him to 
have all of this information coming out online and different opinions and everything and to have to kind of hold in my mind like different possibilities for what kind of a guy this is sure. and of course like you were saying there's one narrative on the internet where people imagined his house and i talked about this in my tweet yeah. his house to be like a house of horrors yeah. and and hyper neglected children and uh kayla Ricada, she doesn't even bathe she just yes. walks around all the time looking horrible and all of that and you know and then the, and and so it was um and then the thing with the kid, there was a part of me, even though it's in hindsight, it does sound crazy. There was a part of me that wondered, well, I don't know this guy. Maybe he really was. Maybe he thought, you know, ADHD medication, no different from cocaine. And really, in a lot of ways, it's it really isn't. not. But yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so there was a part of me that I could kind of see how someone, let me put it this way. You know how there are people who are too smart for their own good? Yeah. And I, I can kind of see I'm, him. I'm, I'm one. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, well, I, you know, I almost said that. <laughs> Yeah, I know one of those guys. But anyway, go ahead. I was going to say, like you and me, basically. Yeah. No, but there are people who are they're too clever for their own good. And there was a part of me that could almost kind of see that, right? But if he's got his kids back now, especially with all of the publicity that this thing has gotten and the authorities there in Minnesota, like they're tracking all of this stuff online. They know that people are watching. I just don't think there's any way in hell they would give him his kids back so quickly if they really thought that this kind of fucked up shit was going on i just don't really think that and i know now i you know i brought this the broom because i don't want to hear a fucking you're sweeping. word you're sweeping. from anyone <laughs> you're sweeping for ricada oh. right now they're gonna call you a sweeper uh but it made no sense to me from the start uh and like you said you didn't know him that well I, I knew him fairly well. He was I would consider considered him a friend uh, at a certain point. Been on the show many times. Of course, we had a big feud too. They're pretty famous uh, as well. But we buried that, and then bad shit still happened to him. Um, but um, I, he didn't strike me as that type of guy. And also, I had been around him and his wife. And I know there's all these rumors and and all this stuff and you know extracurricular activities, et cetera. But I had been around him and his wife, and I know they love each other from what I could tell, at least. Right. I, I, well, I won't comment. Uh, <laughs> things can change, I guess. <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've had a wife or two. Uh, I guess things can change. But uh, from my experience with them, you know, I, I, I wouldn't expect, um, you know, like uh, hatred or them to turn on each other. Of course, I didn't expect. Well, I don't <laughs> doubt. Me either, well, but, I don't, uh, anyway, I don't doubt. No, I was going to say, I don't doubt that he has been living an unconventional lifestyle and that his sexual relationships or practices or what, whatever, however you want to put it, might be outside of some people's comfort zones or what have you. Alleged, and I also, by the way, alleged. We don't ahead. know that those- Alleged. One, only one no, no. Uh, and all of this is just my opinion, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I, I personally, I think that's, there is probably an unconventional relationship with the, with April going on. And it I don't seems, judge that. Seems and, then, like and secondly, well, and it's, I'm not, and I'm someone who's not, married legally or whatever right and secondly though i think that he probably has used some cocaine and there was you know i don't think it was like everything was planted there or something i think that you've got somebody who at least at one point was recreationally using drugs and i have no judgment about that the only time that i have judgment about it is if it is actually endangering their kids and i just don't see that he would have his children back now so soon after the state had taken them, uh, that he would have them back so soon if that was truly an, an an endangering environment. I just don't believe it. I don't either. And also, you know, if you believe the allegations in the uh, search warrant and the affidavit and all that, I mean, the drugs were locked up, right? Like they weren't, you know, sitting right. out on the kitchen table. They're locked in a safe, right. literally. Uh, and, you know, drugs are, on, you know, in the same house as kids. I know people have problems with that or whatever. But, um, you know, if any of that's true, uh, it seemed like he was, um, if he was doing that again, I don't, anything right, right. the government says, I, I just, I agree. You know, I don't trust the government. Um, but, um, it, it sounds like if those things are true, he was being a responsible user actually. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, exactly. If the drugs were locked up and it wasn't bleeding over into other areas of well, his life with his kids, I mean, yeah. to where they were being truly neglected or endangered, sure. then I absolutely believe that it's not it's not any of our business and that it doesn't mean that he's a terrible father. And look, the thing is, like, I don't drink alcohol just because Good I don't idea. like it personally. It's just not my thing. Like, we all have things that we like and we don't like just, you know, things that do it for us and they don't. But uh, but alcohol just makes me sick, makes me feel tired. I don't like the way it makes me feel. So it's easy for me to say what I'm about to say. But, like, 
I'm sort of baffled by how much more acceptable it is for people to drink or even get drunk around their kids. You know, and when's the last time you thought badly of someone because they weren't locking their alcohol away or whatever, right? And so I understand that that Coke and other drugs like this, I understand that they get a worse reputation. And yes, there are adulterants in them that can make them a lot more um, lethal. And I understand that, you know, the, the visual image of people snorting or whatever, it turns people off. It's different than drinking. But I just don't see where this is some great moral failing on his part that's any worse than people who are heavy drinkers around their kids. I don't know. I just don't. Well, alcohol is the worst drug there is, actually. Uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, I'm kind of not... Agree. Yeah, I mean, by a lot. Uh, and uh, I'm known for my public struggles with substance abuse, I guess you could say. Uh, and um, alcohol would be one of them. Uh, but really, so the show, when it took off, when it first took off way back in the day, um, I was drinking pretty much every show, right? Like, that was just part of the show, me getting drunk and talking shit. And it was no problem until it became a problem. And, and until I got back on an old habit of mine, uh, Xanax. Uh, and when you mix, I don't know, you don't like alcohol, but I've had that. No, but I've had the experience you're going to talk about, like where I was hanging out in college with friends and I, even though I didn't like drinking, it was just the thing to do. So I drank too much and then I'd never tried Xanax before, or maybe I had, but I'd never taken it with alcohol. Yeah, and it's so totally I, different. And I totally alcohol. black from that yeah, point on, out. totally blacked out. And as it turns out, I don't want to share this story with you all, but I did do something that was definitely not what I would have done if I sober state of right. mind. I won't uh, elaborate, but I can imagine, yeah. Uh, and uh, I've done some things that I wouldn't have done uh, either uh, in that state. And you, you totally... Um, you don't always black out, but if you take enough, you'll black out. Uh, and you'll say some things you don't mean. Like I've said some of the meanest things to some people that like, I, it's like a demon. That's inside you almost. Here's a super $1 chat on Rumble. Um, booze is ape monkey shit. The I true patrician's it. choice is methamphetamine. He said, <laughs> booze is monkey shit. I'll just say, he said the true patrician's choice is methamphetamine. Uh, he, he likes methamphetamine. Uh, and he talks about that often. Um, you alcohol is so pleb, right? Alcohol is so, so pleb. pleb. Yeah, he thinks weed's, weed is pleb, too. I used to be a big pothead uh -oh. uh, <laughs> as well. Um, I don't smoke now. That's but... my that's my substance of choice. I wouldn't even call it a drug because, you know, when you do something so much that it's just, like, woven in with your, <laughs> how your my, life. That's how it was with me, yeah. <laughs> it was like uh, five, six joints a day, uh, vape, pick it up, uh, bong rip. Yeah, that's how it was with me. But you're not doing that now? You stopped weed? I stopped weed. Uh, I stopped weed. I haven't smoked weed uh, in a minute. Uh, so, yeah, I stopped smoking weed. I do. You know what happened? How I became an alcoholic? I told this story on air before, but I was basically forced to leave my hometown. I got into some legal problems, and, they, and uh, one of my lawyer's defenses was, well, he's about to leave with his mother to move to South Carolina, and I was 20 years old. And they said, well, he's leaving town anyway, you know, let him off, whatever. Uh, I got caught with some Xanax, and um, he said, get a prescription for it. And uh, I bought one from an online pharmacy, and he looked at this, and he said, this is bullshit. Uh, but his, the judge happened to be his brother-in-law. And so uh, he said, look, Your Honor, my client had a prescription. Here it is right here. And before the state could even object, uh, he said, $500 fine. And the state didn't even get a word out because the fix was already in, basically. I see. But, I see. Well, uh, good for you. Yeah. And then I had two marijuana possessions within a month's time. Now, in Arkansas at the time, I lived in West Memphis, Arkansas, born in Memphis. I consider myself, you know, Memphian, basically. Oh, like uh, Damian Eccles and all of that. Yep. Yep. Stuff, West right? Memphis yeah, 3. Yeah. I know. I was yeah, yeah. I was the same age as the kids when they were murdered and was went to Boy Scout uh, Boy Scouts with... Um, was it Evans, I think, was the last name. I can't remember all. Michael Myers, uh, I think it was Chris Evans. So uh, people around you were talking about that stuff a lot, I bet. Oh, after yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even. The whole town was on lockdown for like a year and a half after. A semester uh, 33 cent on. $1 on Rumble. Um, Admit you're a marijuana addict. Hold on. Embrace the crystal. <laughs> the crystal. It burns so good. <laughs> How are you going to fix your VCR when you're stoned? And I'm going to fix your VCR when you're stoned and eating all the cookies that Dude, eat your marijuana I mean, I, I'll say this. Uh, I'll say this. I definitely did a, a lot of Adderall and stuff when I was trying to finish school, particularly grad school. And like the problem, sir, 
And how have you solved this problem? The problem, sir, is the downs that come after yeah. the up periods. Or you just never come down. You just stay up the whole time. I, I think he might just stay up. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so the West Memphis Three, uh, let's see if I can name them all. Jesse Baldwin, or excuse me, uh, Baldwin, I forget his first name, Jesse Miskelly, and, of course, Damian Eccles, uh, who was painted as Satan, basically, uh, by the local press. They made three movies about it uh, on HBO, Paradise Lost, one, two, and three. I don't know if you know all this history or whatever. I do actually, no, I think it's cool. Yeah, it's and so I was the same age as these kids when they were murdered. And you couldn't go outside, like your parents wouldn't let you go outside for like a year and a half afterwards without like parental supervision. Um, there was a lot of, they call it satanic panic. That's uh, what they call it now, but um at the time, there was a lot of worries that there were going to be more child murders uh, in the area. And so I guess it's kind of a scarring event in my life. Right, that's what I was thinking, yeah. honestly. I bet really, in a lot of ways, it was kind of always in the background with your life. Yeah, it, it, well, and, and it ate almost two years up in my childhood. I mean, I couldn't right. walk down the street riding a bike uh, around town. That was no, no, like that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, the West Memphis Three, a uh, seminal moment. Now, I always, well, at first... I believed like the whole town that they were guilty of sin, right? Um, and uh, it was just fore foregone conclusion they were guilty of sin. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I got older, I came to believe that they did not commit the murders, uh, and they eventually did get out. Alfred pleas and all this stuff, and so they are out now. Uh, but um, at the time, like it was locked down. Evening Times is the local paper paper there in uh, West Memphis, and every day was a new headline about an atrocity. The little boys were like castrated and shit. Like it was a gruesome, uh, gruesome, mm. gruesome scene. Uh, and so there was no doubt. And Damien Eccles uh, was like, um, now he listened to. We'll talk about Manson here in a minute, but I don't know if Manson. It's Metallica, I think. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it was it Metallica. It wasn't even like really hardcore shit, but right. Um, they, they, but he had a real attitude about him though, and he was really flippant. Like if you watch these films, you may have seen him. Um, he's like devil may care attitude, and he's like smirking around. He's, right. He's, looks, he's playing the heel, right? Well, he got sent to death row <laughs> right. for playing the heel. Uh, right. They gave the other two uh, life in prison without parole. Now they've been, they're out now, all three. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I didn't know you knew about the West Memphis Three. Actually, I should have known that. Uh, but yeah, I know a lot about it. <laughs> I know a lot about it. I never, I never thought about it that way though, <clears throat> that it was kind of a, almost like a PTSD type thing in my childhood, really, because, uh, you know, most kids don't go through that, right. Where you're just like on basic permanent lockdown for 18 months to, to I two can years. see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. people but, are scared of it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, maybe you could go out and play, a, 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 baseball if your parents are with you at the park or something like that uh but as far as like you know most kids are just going to people's houses right the other friends houses or riding their bikes around that was a no-no for like two years almost um and eventually you know away. but um i don't know do you have any thoughts on the west Mem west memphis three or that case or i mean i've just seen the documentaries that uh, you were talking about but i mean here's an interesting segue into manson and we can we can talk about Ricada more yeah, if we'll you want to, to as Ricada, well but, yeah. um but actually so the the woman who directed those documentaries um exposing the injustice that had occurred with the west memphis three she also directed evan rachel wood's hbo two-part hit piece on manson really? that came out several years ago yes and i've actually argued with this woman it's amy berg this producer she's director. a very famous uh director yeah i've argued with her over dms before she blocked me <laughs> <laughs> but i was trying to say to her like can't you see that actually what you're doing with manson is you are west memphising him and you don't realize it because you just blindly trust what these women are telling you and you know there are just a number of people who are really invested in the idea that women won't lie about this kind of stuff and that these kinds of hoaxes are not possible and so the thing with the manson story is that the reason i've been hanging on for three and a half years covering it even though i you know, understand it's not always the most cultural culturally prominent thing but i think it's just such a fascinating story that you have this collusion between these different women recruited by a disgruntled crazy frankly ex-girlfriend evan rachel wood and the, these group of women that collude with people in the media to get this documentary made, to have uh, the, the week uh, that they came out with their allegations, to have all of these big interviews, and, you know, New York Magazine time, yeah, and awesome. The View and Good Morning America and all this stuff. And then you also had 
Democratic politicians going after Manson, which I know sounds kind of crazy because, you know, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, it was the right wing that was critiquing yes. him, right? But in this case, you had a number of California and it's not and some of them in other states as well. well they but blame a him for of, Columbine and all kinds of shit. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I know you're yeah, exactly. And so he's been through these kinds of you use the term satanic panic earlier, these different kinds of panics. And it, you know, it, it mostly came from the the right wing and the Christian right in the beginning. And then it it seemed with Columbine that that really triggered a lot more widespread criticism of him. And then now with Me Too, it's been a kind of a sexual panic that has allowed these hoaxers to create a really pretty astounding hoax. And and thank God that I think enough people have finally caught on to the truth, particularly in the entertainment industry, that Manson is being allowed back in. And so he's platformed on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, his his new song, his new single is number one on the rock and metal charts, but platformed on really? iTunes. Yeah, yeah, seriously. I mean, I don't know where it is now, but like a, but several but it, days ago, what, yeah. yeah, it was number one in the rock and metal. And um, and so he's got uh, he's got some headlining shows that he's doing here and in Europe, across the country and in Europe. And then he's also the opening act for Five Finger Death Punch. I'm not a big fan of their music. It's just not my thing, but they're very popular. And so he's going around to arenas and amphitheaters doing a, a one hour opening act for them. And a lot of people are showing up these concerts just to see Manson and not even to see Five Finger Death Punch. So he's got a new music video out. You know, I don't want to sound like his PR manager, but I'm just saying it is really astounding to me that someone who was so, people tried so hard to cancel has I saw been able Ye to- brought him out too, uh, actually. I don't know if you he saw did. it. No, Ye he did. Ye brought him out during the middle before they had like debunked some of this stuff. I'm, I'm going to go through your debunking. Um, how sure. you say it got debunked here in a second, but uh, Yay brought him out. Now Yay's had his own uh, controversies it's still going on, actually. But um, but he brought him out. I think it was the Donda two. Um, I don't know if it was Donda two or Donda one, but the whole stadium show. And he brought out Marilyn Manson when he was being blackballed. He brought him out. Right. Uh, right. Now here goes a super chat. Hold on. Russell O O eight eight cent five dollars on Rumble. Uh, Has the guest or host for that matter? Read David McGowan's weird scenes in Lauren Canyon. Has the guest or host for that matter? The host has not, but has the I guest. I have not. You have Lauren it? Canyon or Laurel Canyon? Uh, let's see. I think it says like Lauren Canyon, but okay. let me. I have not, though. I can look it up, though. I'll look uh, up the name after I get Laurel off Laurel Canyon, it should be, right? Uh, let's see. Laurel Canyon makes sense. The music. Let's see. <laughs> I got you. I know. I should read it, though. Laurel weird Canyon, scenes. the inside Canyon. story of rock and roll's legendary neighborhood. Is that what you're talking about, mm -hmm. Gristle? Laurel, yeah, it was Laurel. Uh, I have not, but that sounds like something I would enjoy um, as a rock and roll fan. Although I'm a rap fan too, because I'm from Memphis, Three Six Mafia, and all that shit. You know, I can't help. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Do you like Three Six Mafia? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just what I've heard. Like, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you like all their songs or whatever. Well, yeah, you I probably like couldn't go through song. their whole catalog. Like, I can. Yeah. <laughs> not like um, you. Sip it on some scissor, you know that one. But anyway, um, hopefully, uh, I do. <laughs> uh, what is the other one? Uh, I gotta. Stay I was thinking high. of the stay fly. Yeah, it's actually stay high yeah. though, not stay fly. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So those are the, two that, that I know. the censored one is stay fly, but it's stay high, uh, is is the uncensored version. But, um, okay. So first off, tell me what they alleged, and then tell me how you and others tore down the allegations. So the way this happened is that I'll go way back and see how it started with Evan Rachel Wood. Yeah. So Evan Rachel Wood for years and years had always been adamant in interviews over over years about the fact that Marilyn Manson was great, that he wasn't at all this this weird controlling guy that people were afraid of. In fact, with him, she had finally found the freedom to be who she really was. I've heard cetera, this story before, by the way, and uh, from somebody else. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, I'll just yeah, I know. Well, it's, I mean, it's good. More <laughs> That's people, an insider more reference, by the way. Uh, you wouldn't get it, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, so she, um, so for years and years, and then after they broke up, even in subsequent interviews and so forth, nothing but good things to say about him and her time with him. And then what happened was when she claims that, and she said this in, in an interview, she claims that when Trump was elected, that it was a wake up call for her that she needed to become more of an activist. And therefore she was going to start sharing about the sexual assaults that she had been through. Now, back then she claimed originally that she had been assaulted by two people, a significant other, and then the owner of a bar. And elsewhere in the interview, she mentions Manson in a really good light. So it's almost like in that interview, she's talking about two people 
unrelated to Manson. It's kind of strange. But what happened was for several years after that, she um, began speaking out as an activist about uh, the trauma of being an abuse assault survivor, never naming Manson. Uh, then she testified before the U.S. House of Representatives, like the main one, the Capitol. She testified before a bunch of House members about her trauma. And she also testified before the California Assembly. She wrote a law, a, a bill that became a law, a Survivors Act, the Phoenix Act for survivors, extending the statute of limitations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so here's the point that I'm making. She got a lot of fucking mileage and attention as this activist. And also at this time, she was dating a woman who was also a, an activist and also had herself engaged in some hoaxes before this. And this woman, Ilma Gore, her claim to, to fame was having painted a portrait of Trump with a micro penis. And so that was her big work of art that got her a lot of acclaim was Trump with a I micro penis. I remember that actually, but yeah. yeah. No. So that's Evan Rachel Wood's ex-girlfriend. And so what happened was these two got together and it was kind of like a perfect storm like feeding off of each other and and really began creating this image of Evan Rachel Wood as this activist who's been abused. Now, she never mentioned Manson until she was interested in doing, and here's where Amy Berg comes into it. She was interested, Evan Rachel Wood, in doing a documentary and having Amy Berg do it about her work as an activist, Evan Rachel Wood's work as a, an activist. And Amy Berg was interested, kind of, but it seems, if reading between the lines, that she knew that there was not really something very enticing there. Like, how many people are really going to want to watch a documentary about Evan Rachel Wood's gender activism? Like, nobody, right? It'd be like a vanity project. And so what happened was, at this point, Evan Rachel Wood then starts talking about Marilyn Manson and, and, and lets Amy Berg know that she would be willing to actually name Manson and go after Manson. And at that point, Amy Berg got a lot more interested. HBO eventually came on. And so... And, and so then finally, months after that, in a hyper coordinated announcement where there were actual documentary cameras, Amy Berg right next to her when, she, when Evan Rachel Wood did this, she got online and she named Manson in an Instagram post that was February 2nd or 3rd of 2021. And of course, this is all captured in the documentary and she's putting on the great show of like crying and all of that, right, for the documentary. But she names Manson as her abuser. And then on the same day, multiple other women come out naming him as an abuser as well they all come out on their instagram now by the way i want to i want to say two things about amy berg first off yes. so, <clears throat> she directed a, an open secret which is it's an open secret that that movie's full of shit. uh and it's directed by gabe hoffman or excuse me it was funded by gabe hoffman another enemy of mine uh on twitter and uh it's filled with fake testimony it was so bad that she even like i basically tried to she didn't do any press for it right it was so bad uh, so she's known for making movies that are full of shit. Uh, so she directed she direct she directed an open secret. Um, a couple of the people um, like tried to um, speak out and say there were like false testimonies and stuff in the movie. Gabe Hoffman threatened to sue them and all this stuff. So she's she's made. I'm glad you told me all that actually because I yes, had no idea. She made an open secret and, and and looked that up and there's a Huffington Post article about how he tried he tried he threatened to sue them, etc. Uh, it's one of the craziest articles ever because they block out so much to keep those guys from getting sued. Also, she directed West of Memphis, which is not the one I'm talking about. Uh, and is oh okay, it, and is it's about the same topic. But it's it's not the it's not the ones you should watch. You should watch Paradise Lost, uh, one, two, and three, and they di were directed by Joe Berenson, I believe. Uh, let me see, Paradise no. Lost, HBO. But the hers is by far, um, yeah, Paradise Lost. Lost, the child murders at Robin Hood Hills. Uh, Joe Bur uh, uh, Joe Berlinger, excuse me. Uh, I'll actually send you that link, but there's three different ones. She directed by far the, like, these are like the ones who chronicled it at the time, right? Like they, mm -hmm. they were with Eccles. They were with Miss mm -hmm. Kelly, like documentary, like following them, them around and chronicling West Memphis, like while this was happening. Uh, so those would be my recommendations for you to watch about the West Memphis three, not her bullshit movie. But anyway, not that it was bad. I don't good know. To know. It, it, no, it, it's it's know. just. It's subpar compared to those, and and they did a three after they got out as well. But um, they basically got them released, not her. Uh, those movies on HBO. They were also on HBO though. But mm. uh, anyway, now go ahead, continue with your with your story. 
Yeah, so basically at that point, she and these other women named Manson, and this is this is basically the death knell for him and for his career seemingly at that point because you'll remember in 2021 we weren't as a society we were not nearly so jaded about me too and these types of allegations as we are now and i think that people are now are much more skeptical and they're much more hip to the fact that when you get things like money and the desire for money the desire for fame the desire for notoriety personality disorders all of this stuff can get together in a very combustible mix and create these situations, right? And it's not that there aren't a lot of women who are abused, but like these kinds of hoaxes, they're possible. But in 2021, it seemed like it was an open and shut case to almost everyone because it's like, okay, all of these women and this respected Westworld actress, they're saying these horrible things about him. So goodbye. And so he lost everything at that point. His um, There were articles attesting to the fact that his manager supposedly dropped him. I'm actually not sure in hindsight if that was true anymore. But there were articles saying that his manager dropped him, that his record label dropped him. He was dropped from several different TV shows that he was working on because he was branching out into an acting career at that point. Uh, he was, uh, you know, I mean, he that was it. And so what he has spent the last three and a half years doing is suing, first of all, suing Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore, and it's currently still in the courts, and then defending himself against various lawsuits, nothing criminal because the police investigated it, they closed the file, they sent it to the DA. I've talked to people that the police talked to, interviewed, they know it's a hoax, and they sent it to the DA, and woke DA, LADA George Gascone is sitting on it, and he's claiming he needs more information to make a final determination because he doesn't want to clear Manson for optical reasons, right? Because he's really woke and pro victims and all that. By and the so way, somebody in chat asked if Evan Rachelwood was Jewish. Uh and actually she is Jewish. <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> well there's kind of she's interesting not thing Jewish interesting her mother's too. Jewish, so she's Jewish. But anyway, go she, ahead. No, but it's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the allegations that she threw in about Manson was that he was an anti Semite. Anti -Semite yeah. And this is because she said he collected German memorabilia and and this sort of thing and and so it, it's interesting how this side was trying to use that that argument as well and to get that getting the racial thing yeah. in there uh, as well. She's not. I don't think that she's um she's not, she's not like Jewish, practicing, but, but I mean, if religion. your mother's Jewish. Jewish. And she's well, and in the documentary, she actually sings uh, a song, I believe, in in Hebrew, and she's lighting a menorah with her son. <laughs> so she's really trying to. Lean and in here's on the that. funny thing: yeah. if you go back and you look at, there's concert. I have it on my my Instagram page, but there's concert footage of Evan Rachel Wood doing the Hitler salute backstage at Manson concerts, and no one else is doing it because Manson actually doesn't do pro-fascist music. He's anti-fascist, and Evan Rachel Wood just thought it was so cool to go back there behind stage and nobody else doing it to do the Hitler salute over and over. So it's really kind of funny when you think about this one degree turn that it's she's It's also funny because I see a quote from her and this is from 2012. It says, my mother is Jewish and I was raised with a religion. I believe in God, but I'm not religious. I am spiritual. Spiritual. My definition of God isn't any religion. It's very personal. And then you tell me she's lighting a menorah and all this. Shit. She's leaning you know? into it because right. it's part of her victim story that he targeted her partly because she was Jewish. So anyway, um, so all, so all of these people around the world come to this conclusion that this guy is a horrible monster and he's canceled. And we can do your super chat. Rambo yeah. 6 sent $1 Says on Rambo. Gascon's a worthless Gascon faggot. Is a worthless faggot. He's one reason I avoid He's one LA reason County. I avoid LA County. <laughs> I don't think anybody likes him. I, I don't even think like the, the left. There are lots of people on the left who complain about him too. Like he's he's probably the most hated DA that they've had in forever. But so basically what happened is Manson got for a while completely canceled. He did work hard for three and a half years behind the scenes to get back to the point where he could do what he's doing now and is producing music and putting it out there. But but the guy went through hell and he lost a lot of money, I'm sure, fighting these legal battles and he's still fighting some of them. And so you, you ask, well, how did I come to this conclusion? Well, I could tell you a lot that he's innocent. I could tell you a lot of different things. People should look into my work, but I'll tell you a few things that are really compelling. First of all, um, it is we are certain, and this has been documented in the court system through actual evidence, we are certain that Evan Rachel Wood and her co-conspirator girlfriend at the time faked an FBI letter and actually faked it, like wrote a fake letter. It was Manson related, wrote a fake letter, picked a real FBI agent, faked that agent's name, and then submitted this in court as a part of the family custody dispute that she was having with Jamie Bell, the father of her son. And it's a long story as to why she did this, but but this is a woman who fakes government documents, forges government documents, and then submits them in court. I mean, how much more out of touch 
with reality and manipulative can you get? So that's one thing. Another thing is that she kidnapped her child and absconded and fled to Tennessee. And the father of her child, Jamie, the actor Jamie Bell, had to plead with the judge to let him see his child and get Evan Rachel Wood to bring the child home because he couldn't see the child for months because Evan Rachel Wood had kidnapped the kid and was putting him off and not allowing him to see I know a little something about that too, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, and this is, again, this is all documented. Like I, if you go on my Instagram or what have you, I, I, I have like, I have court documents there that people can read. It's astounding. And Jamie Bell, her, the father of her child, her ex says in these court documents that she is psychologically damaging their kid by making the kid afraid of Marilyn Manson. He says that uh, the, the kid around him would say things like, we can't do fun things until Brian's in jail and stuff like that. And so, and, and so if you read the court documents, Jamie Bell clearly thinks that Evan Rachel Wood is a manipulative, narcissistic nut job. And that, and, and he says in the court documents that her allegations about Manson defy credibility, something like that. So this is the kind of woman we're dealing with. We're not dealing with some angelic Westworld, you know, yeah. android or something. Like the, the real person is like an Amber Heard. She's like an Amber Heard. And of course, she was friends with Amber Heard for a while too, although um, they both like to deny that. But it's true. And I've talked to people who knew that they were hanging out a lot um, in particular, at a particular time. Um, so anyway, that's another thing. And I'll give you the last thing. Um, one of the main accusers of Manson, her name is Ashley Morgan Smithline. She was one of his main accusers. She was even on the cover of People magazine. She went on The View and various outlets proclaiming how horrible he was and how abused she was. And he treated me like an animal and all of this. Well, guess what? She came out in a legal document and declared that the whole thing was a hoax and she lied. And Evan Rachel Wood recruited her to wow. lie. It's all there in this legal document, and it's a legal document. It's not an interview. It's something that you know, you're held to on, yeah, exactly, on, on, on threat of perjury. So to me, just these three things, it's like, come on. <laughs> and you add to that the fact, this is my last, I guess my last point, that Manson has a former fiance named Rose McGowan, uh -huh. Ms. Me Too. Who started Me who, Too, basically. And who has claimed on several occasions now that he never abused her, that she does not recognize the person who is described by these women. If you look in her book, I've read her book, actually. She has a whole chapter on how awesome Manson was and like the sweetest guy. And, the, and he helped her heal from her experience with Harvey Weinstein. I mean, this guy is actually the opposite of how he's being portrayed. And I've talked to a number of women. I talked to an ex-girlfriend on my show who said the same thing about him. She says he's a chump. When it comes to women, those are her words. Uh, he has a wife now of many years. Of he's been with many years in a relationship. She's fully standing by him. Dita Von Teese, his ex-wife, has come out also and declared that he did not abuse her. It's it's very clear to me. Well, it seems like open and shut uh, clearing, right? Like I mean, <laughs> an open and shut clearance. Now I saw you met with him the other day. On now is that I the did. first time you ever got to meet him? It is absolutely. I could tell uh, by the look on your face, by the way, I could already, I, I don't know if it said it in the tweet, but I could just tell by the look on your face. Cause you look like ecstatic. Elated. Uh, yes. Yeah, you yeah. Should. It's too bad. You can't pull it up. Cause it, uh, I should have, I, I should have gotten it. No, I can you grab can. it. I can just, just scroll down. Keep my talking. While talking but... Yeah. Keep talking though. No, I, uh, I'd never met him. And actually I took several, someone took several uh, photos. Actually his wife, uh, Lindsay, uh, was, was taking the photos, but, uh, she took several and I'm smiling in three of them. But in the fourth, I had that look of like <laughs> elation on my face. And I said, ah, oh, that one captures it. That's good. No, despite what a number of my detractors think and have claimed over the years, I have not had this tight relationship with Marilyn Manson and have never spoken to him. I've never spoken to him prior to this. And the things that I have done, I've done the things that I've talked about, I've talked about because I believe them. And I think after stating what I've just stated, you know, you can all see why. And so, yeah, there it is. There so, it yeah, is so screen. I, uh, yeah. I went to a concert. I had announced that I was going to go to his first concert, his comeback concert. And so I was already going, had tickets and everything. And as it, as it got to be the, the week of the concert, I was hearing from certain mutual people that there were, you know, friends and some fans that Manson was going to be meeting with after his show. And so I thought, uh, you know, I just, I shouldn't pass up this opportunity to meet with him. So kind of through back channels, I was able to, to meet him after the show. And, you know, I'll tell you, uh, Ethan, I thought about not doing it or not publicizing it because I know there are going to be a lot of people who say, oh, look, you know, she's just look at this. She's, she's elated. Look at this. She's just a dumb fan. And the whole reason she's been doing all this for the last three and a half years is just to ingratiate herself with Manson. But, but, you, are, but certain, you are a fan of, of his work, though, right? 
I I am a fan now. I but I but coming into this like, you like I, a I mega. no I mean I grew up in the '90s and the two, early 2000s and so I knew there were six songs you know that we probably all know yes. and I liked and everything but I'm just not a huge music person. I like classic rock. <laughs> Me <laughs> so too, like, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling Stones. But, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And so. So anyway, I, you know, I thought about not putting it out there, but I was like, you know, screw it. I'm, I'm tired of letting these kinds of concerns, like, like worry me. And so I'm just going to put it out there and people can think what they want to think. And also I was really in a very celebratory mood because I do feel like he's really cleared some big hurdles. Yes. He's still got some of the legal shit to deal with the lawsuits and, and public perception, but he's cleared some big hurdles to be back now and to be climbing iTunes and to be putting out you know, videos that millions of people watch and so forth. And so I kind of felt like maybe there was a little like breathing room now to not have to worry <laughs> about perception quite so much. But it was fun to meet him. I only talked to him for a little while. You know, there are a lot of people coming backstage and in and out and, and so forth. But I got to meet him and his, his lovely wife, Lindsay. And uh, we talked about some serious stuff related to his, his philosophy about what the last few years have meant to him. And I think that if there's one thing that I would feel comfortable sharing, I'll talk about this more in a video later, but I, he really does feel like a lot of good, even though it's been like the trials of Job for him the last few years, he really does feel like a lot of personal good has come out of it for him and strengthening some of his relationships and his marriage and also um, giving him some perspective and also encouraging his sobriety because he had been trying, as I understand, to to quit some stuff for several years but when all of this happened it wasn't related to the drinking but when all this happened i think he had the feeling of like okay it's it's time to like really get my life together so because i'm gonna have to go forward i'm gonna have to go to war basically. you have to be sharp yeah exactly yeah. exactly so yeah and i know the feeling i've uh you know slipped a couple times uh but yeah that's one of the reasons why i decided that it's like i'm gonna have to be sharp to go through this uh and so uh, yeah, I definitely understand that feeling. I don't know if you know this, but he was <clears throat> intimately involved with getting the West Memphis Three freed, uh, and so was I Eddie, heard that. So was yeah, he Eddie, had Johnny Depp. Yeah, right? him and Johnny Depp. This is crazy, by the way. The connection right. and Eddie Vedder, of course, Pearl Jam. Um, so those three, and there are a few others, but they were intimately involved uh, with with getting those three. Uh, got Eccles off death row uh, and got the others and. Um, got them released from prison. They were going to put Eccles to death, actually. Uh, yep. Uh, and he got a stay of execution, I think, even a couple times. Uh, I'd have to double check that. But, yeah, they were definitely going to kill him. Uh, they still have the death penalty in Arkansas. They, they do carry it out every once in a while. Um, but, yeah, I just not looked that up because I thought he was involved with that. Uh, and so I did a little Google search, and, yeah, he was deeply involved with that. It's crazy how all that connects. Uh, and yeah, and of course, Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp and Marilyn Manson were... were Oh, we're best ahead. friends for a while. I mean, yeah. I don't know the status of their relationship now because I know yeah. Johnny's been in Europe for a while and yeah. so forth. Uh, they've both been going through the shit, but like they, they've been really, really good friends. And so I think it's also, that's a, an interesting irony of all this too, is that they both have gone through Me Too hoaxes led by manipulative, conniving actresses. You know, I mean, J uh, Marilyn Manson in, in his own fashion, you know, his was way bigger and crazier than Johnny Depp, right? I like to compare it to like a horror movie. Like you have the first one, like Alien. There's one alien and then there's aliens. And it's just like yes. a ton of them. And I kind of felt like that was the Manson case in relation to the Depp case. Like the Depp case is like, there's this one crazy fucking alien with borderline personality <laughs> disorder that he had to deal with. But then with the Manson thing, it's like, ah! <laughs> It's like, yeah, a bunch coming at you. And I see, I see uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Randy Williams in chat said they were guilty. A lot of people still think they're guilty. I have heard people say that, that, West, that the Memphis Free were guilty. They still, there are people who, who think they're guilty. Uh, I don't think they're guilty. But uh, again, you know, I was raised in an environment where 99% of the town thought they were guilty. I remember running into Echo's uh, girlfriend at Walmart and my mom, like, grabbing me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was like that uh, type of situation. Um you know, who knows for sure. Uh, but I came around to to being pro West Memphis 3 and pro releasing them, actually, myself. Uh, Dr. Jank sent $10 on Rumble. Let's see. I looked into Kurtz when she spoke out about the Ralph Amali. I told Ralph she seemed like good people. <laughs> I was right. Also, fuck the goal. Fuck the goal. One step <laughs> Have you passed closer. your goal? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Hold on, let's uh, see. Let me, let me refresh that. I need that. to help him pass his goal. Yeah. Let's see here. Um... Let me see if it'll reset. It should be 23 away, I think, now. Once, Whenever it resets, uh, Rumble, 
the Rumble API, they have to do something special. So it's 22, uh, it's 22 away from the goal. Uh, and I don't know if you could see that or hear that. Oh, wait, let me move this or something. Could you way. hear that or, or read what he said? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I could, yeah, I could hear and read what he said. Oh, oh you could plugs. actually hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. Uh, like good like, like through your yeah headphones. like that weird robot voice yeah yeah you can hear yeah. it. okay cool <laughs> yeah. cool yeah because uh, uh, i was told super chats could be heard through the um uh, through there now i've had some problems with the roadcaster so i wasn't for sure uh but uh, you were right jank uh after she spoke out about the ralph amell well she kind of was just talking shit really uh <laughs> i didn't even know who the ralph amell was either so this has been an education i literally no offense but i just don't watch much youtube or listen to podcasts or whatever myself <laughs> and so i was just tuning in for the on tug's channel for the ricada thing um you know he retweeted me yesterday uh with the same screenshot that i did but he didn't steal it for himself he put the same screenshot above mine but quote tweeted me uh, so that I still got all the views off of it. So yeah, I that he, was seems, nice. he seems, he seems, it seems like y'all are very cool. Well, he probably doesn't want to get bad karma that. again from FTG. stabbing you in the back. Yeah, yeah. And I, he, we follow each other. I, we never talked, um, but um, like, you know, I, we follow each other on Twitter, but like he could have just stole that for himself. He got more retweets on his. He doesn't follow not. me on Twitter. Really? I don't know. Yeah, Nick, how much more of this <laughs> <laughs> do I have to do? <laughs> hey, Kurtz, I have a PhD, too. A pretty huge dog, that is. By Wait, the way, someone says they have a PhD. <laughs> we just hit the goal. Let me, you can probably hear that, too. I don't know. Um, but that's what I hit when we hit the goal. Uh, Gristle, with the 22 spots, said, fuck the goal, FTG. Assmaster says, hey, Kurtz, I have a PhD, too. A pretty huge dong, that is, uh, is, is what he is what That he can said. be more useful these days. Now, you have a PhD. We talked about this last time. Was it literature you had a PhD in? Um, yeah. English literature. English, have you ever yeah. read uh, Wuthering Heights? I have. It's, I like it. It's kind it's, of a – I like the other, if I can be now really um, – High polluting. I like the other Bronte better, Jane Eyre. Really? You like Jane, Jane Eyre, Eyre better? Oh, yeah. God. That offended no. me. I read Jane Eyre. So I was in jail for eight months. <laughs> and you read uh, Jane Eyre in jail? Yeah, I read Jane I Eyre in that. jail. And I read <laughs> I uh, Wuthering Heights in jail. I guess I um, just identified with, with Wuthering Heights a little bit more. Um, Are you a Heathcliff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Uh, and the tortured, you know, star-crossed lover yeah. thing, uh, you know, it's kind of my jam, too. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a Heathcliff, I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Wuthering Heights, and I think that was the only one written by Emily, but didn't she die after she wrote that? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but I'd have to double-check. I'm not a Bronte expert. But I, I love Jane Eyre, too, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I'm more of a Wuthering Heights guy, yeah, I have to say. Uh, what's your favorite book? um oh god it's always hard i so i really like edith wharton actually so i like the age of innocence if you like if you've ever seen the martin scorsese movie with uh daniel day lewis it's a pretty good it's a pretty good rendering so i like that book um i like a lot of just the existential name you. you don't have to just name one <laughs> i like i like existential philosophers so i like camus the myth of sisyphus a lot of people read the stranger you might have read that in prison yeah. too it would have been appropriate. Not in prison, but uh, I did. I did read it. I like a lot of Roman history. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I like some history too. I listen to it. I do listen to a lot of history podcasts because that's what my guy is into. And so, like a ton of Dan Carlin, of course. Yeah. So like um, Livy, Seneca, Tacitus. Um, you know the the Robert Graves actually. Um, I don't know if you know who that is or not. You probably do uh, since you're. <laughs> PhD English literature. You'd but be surprised he, though. <laughs> yeah, but but he wrote I Claudius <clears throat> and he wrote Claudius the God. Uh and they meshed those two together into a mini series in the nineteen seventies. Uh and it's one of the best things you could ever watch on television. Of course the books are I, better. The books I've seen a bit of it. Is the, is that the one with um is it Ian Gil or is it Roddy McDowell? I can't remember. But who's the actor in that? Do you remember? No, it's it, you're talking about Malcolm McDowell. You're talking about Caligula? No. Oh no. no, hold on, let me see. Um now you have to look it up. Derek Jacoby is the head uh Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't yeah. know if you know who Derek Jacoby yeah. is, but yeah. he's like one of it the greatest big, actors of all time. He's a big Shakespearean actor. Yes, you know, I saw him on the stage in the West End, uh, in London. Uh and Lily James was there and what's that guy's name? Madden from um 
from Game of Thrones, Richard Madden. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he Rainbow Six yeah, at $1 on Rumble. <laughs> yeah. The Idiot, but also Rainbow Six. Clancy. Yeah, yeah, so of course he, he played, uh, by the way, The Idiot, but also Rainbow Six. Clancy, that's what uh, I like they Clancy said. a lot. I read a lot of Clancy said. when I was younger, too. But uh, <laughs> so I got to see, of course, Derek Jacobi is one of my favorite actors of all time. And yes, he is a homosexual chat. You don't have to tell me. I already know that. Uh, but I don't care. Uh, it's like, okay, Seinfeld. Yeah, I like Seinfeld too. Okay, sue me. Uh, yeah. But um, I saw him. Uh, he played uh, Mercutio, Mer Mercutio, I believe is how you say it, um, as an old man, which is uh, not the usual age of the, oh, yeah. of the character. Okay. Right? They're, they're, uh, I think they're Romeo's buddy, right, or whatever. Um, but uh, that's not the usual age of the character, but they cast him. And um, Lily James, of course, was Juliet, and Richard Madden was was Romeo. Uh, but he recited the Queen Mab speech. I don't know uh, if you know what I'm talking about, but it's a certain part of Romeo and Juliet. He recited it like he's just Shakespearean actor, so it was probably not hard for him. They're so but good at it, though. It was like so, the true ones. Oh, the true ones, like that are like he was literally trained as a Shakespearean actor. And like he recited, I was just like goosebumps. And I'm not like a Shakespeare expert or anything like that. Although I do love, um, uh, what is it? Uh, fuck. I read this in Juvenile Hall, actually. Uh, uh, Julius Caesar uh, by yeah. Shakespeare. Uh, so, uh, but he recited it and it was just verbatim, just like, it was like riding a bicycle uh for him and the and great ones can do that it absolutely was a, it was amazing to see and uh it was one of the coolest things uh I was with my first wife uh then uh we're no longer a thing but uh but uh she lived in london we had our cross um uh, uh, star cross ocean. experience and we got married but she lived there i lived here and we would split time back and forth and it was she actually co-founded this show believe it or not uh long time ago i'm sure she loves it every time i say that uh but uh i'm being sarcastic by the way but uh <laughs> would but, you have ever started this show if she hadn't if she hadn't been in your life no that's interesting see so things maybe they they do even the failed relationships they happen for a reason i agree uh even even one i'm thinking about now uh <laughs> a different one uh but uh no i would have never started this show without her it's funny because she um was born in karachi actually uh in pakistan but oh, she... i've always wanted to visit pakistan yeah. like when it's safe i guess for right someone like when me it's to go. Safe, yeah <laughs> uh but she was born in karachi but she moved to london when she was like one or two and so she had the most posh like perfect english accent but she's pakistani right well but you know by heritage Pakistan, right, right. British, whatever uh, they say asian over there uh but um our voices like on air just kind of mesh we had chemistry of course we ended up getting married right so we yeah. had chemistry but our voices uh just collided in a perfect way on air with my you know southern accent obviously and her posh british accent and she had a really nice sense of humor and a smash no i wouldn't have started without her can you hear this I Not can't. sure if you knew this, Ralph, but that actor you like is a homosexual. Also, Seinfeld <laughs> is nothing dodgy. <laughs> okay. <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Your audience uh, is so different than mine. It's quite it's quite an experience <laughs> coming over here. <laughs> um, but no, I wouldn't have started without her because I used to host a show called um, The Ralph Retort Live. It was kind of like the prototype or, uh, you know... Um, for this show basically uh and i had i had a show with her and a woman named janet bloomfield and she was an anti-feminist activist from canada and um we did a show together and then we decided i used to be a blogger i wasn't a streamer and so we decided to do a show but we needed a, a new name like i wanted to rebrand and stuff and i had this uh chat group called uh kill team uh, was the name of the group chat and uh another foreign chick uh canadian margaret mclennan uh, he used to ghostwrite for milo yiannopoulos he'll deny that by the way but uh she did uh but anyway um i was trying to think of a name and she goes well it's kill team why don't you just call it kill stream it's such a great name too and i was really just like is. i like I the name like, a lot 
Thank you for that. And uh, it was all her. See? I won't take the credit for it. I'm not going to steal it uh, from a woman. Uh, she she gave me that name, and I was just like, it's perfect. As soon as I heard it, I was like, it's perfect. Uh, and See, so, the Lord is working through all of these. That's right. Just all of these women to that's bring right. you to professional perfection. That's well, I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> and we used to host it once a week. And um, it was basically just to promote my blog and talk shit, but it was kind of like a you know an early um, version of this, not the modern kill stream that didn't start till 2018, because uh, I was gonna go and stay with my fiance for a month. I'll go ahead and just tell you my life story. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> in Britain, I'd been over to Britain twice. British Museum, if you ever go, go there. Um, and I was finally gonna get to go and stay for a whole month. And I went to this hotel room with this idiot that I knew who uh, used to write some stuff on my site. And uh, not the other one who killed his father. That's another story. But he killed his father while I was in jail, actually. Uh, but anyway, that's another story. Um, <laughs> I can tell that story. I'll tell part of that story in a minute. So um, before that happened in August, I, I got really drunk at this hotel. And we almost got in a fight, me and this guy. And I went down to the lobby in Loudoun County, Virginia, and fell asleep on the couch. And I tried to call Nora, that was my first wife's name. And it was at a, she was asleep. It was at a weird time, you know, it was like 4 a.m. or whatever, wherever the hell she was, you know, in London. And um, so she was asleep and she missed the call. And so I fell asleep on the couch and they tried to wake me up a few times. They couldn't, so they called the police. The police came to wake me up. And I didn't know, like, what I thought I was like being attacked or something, like, right? Like, I was that drunk. I didn't know what the fuck was happening. So the cop, like, just dragging me around, dragged me up off, and I took a swing at the cop. I didn't hit him, though. I didn't hit the cop. And of course, he roughed me the fuck up and threw me up against the wall and, you know, put bruises all over my arms and shit. And then I knew I was getting arrested by that time. Uh, that kind of sobers you up a little, a little quick. You're and lucky it, you just didn't land a punch on him, dude. Well, no, that's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, I wish I would have landed the punch, and I'll tell you why in a sec. Uh, because when they had me on the back of the cop car, I mule kicked back at one of them, and I missed. I didn't hit either blow, neither one. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have this thing they made up that it was a female officer. It wasn't a female officer. It was two male officers. They just say that to fuck with me. Uh, actually, it was a Mexican officer, the first one. Uh, and I live in Mexico now, so it's kind of funny. But um, I didn't hit either one of them. But in case you didn't know this, uh, you don't actually have to hit an <laughs> officer. <make> contact. <laughs> you don't actually have to make contact to yeah. get assault on a law enforcement officer. And so... Um, they charged me with two felony assault on law enforcement with minimum six month sentence in Virginia on both. And they charged me with the highest obstruction of, of justice. So I hired this oh, lawyer yeah. out of Fairfax and he's like, man, we'll get this drop down. This is bullshit. We'll get this drop down. And we went to court and, um, the only offer was, um, plead guilty to one count of felony assault or we go to trial on both counts and you're going to lose both. Oh no. So what would the one count entail? What did you have to do? Minimum, I had to do eight months in jail. Uh, uh and I would you didn't have to go to prison. Yeah. Well, that's true, but prison better in some ways. I won't get into that. Oh, but, that's uh, true. No, I know what you mean. I've kind of heard that too. Yeah. But, yeah. um, so yeah, I had to do, I had to do, um, eight months and that's cause I violated my bail. I would only had to do probably the six. They didn't offer me a deal on time though. They said, leave it up to the judge. But I violated my bail because they had this breathalyzer I had to blow into several times a day, and I had timed it where I could drink uh, a half pint, <laughs> a half pint, and two beers, because I had to take one at eleven and then another one uh, between seven and eight, and I had timed it where my blood alcohol level would go back down to zero. But of course, if you're an alcoholic, well, you know, you go over. Uh, one night I had one too many, right. and you so keep it. and so they so they violated me, and I ended up having to go to jail a couple weeks early, and they gave me eight months uh, instead. And while I was in jail, a uh, guy I know or used to know uh, named Lane Davis, and he wrote a lot for my site, um, and he would always fight with his dad over politics. And I was like, dude, just stop. You live in this house, like it's politics. I was raised where. You know, fight, argue over politics, but don't let politics come between friends and family. Like, that was just, like, right, right, inbred. Right, that was inbred in my brain. Like, man, that's your dad. Like, just leave it alone. And um, 
Well, um, him and his dad got in a fight, uh, and he's like, you don't care about these pedophiles and this and that. And he was, you know, these left-wing pedophiles. And uh, he stabbed his father to death in front of his mother uh, while I was in jail. Uh, and um, I remember my wife called me. We got married. Uh, yeah, it was gruesome. Uh, we got married before I went to jail, so she called me. Um, actually, I called her uh, because I, she couldn't call me. Uh, and she was just crying and crying and crying um, because he had killed his father. And I said, don't tell anybody. And maybe nobody will find out. And they didn't find out for like two or three months. They didn't find really? out. They didn't find out that it happened. And then. Oh, because there was nobody to like report him. Yeah. Missing yeah. Well, or, I mean, oh. they didn't know his name. They didn't know his name. Uh, but they eventually. Oh, oh that's right. um, He was writing under a pseudonym, but they eventually found the article and he had been doxxed at some point and they linked it to me and then they're like ralph tried to cover up this murder and try to do this and that and it was more just like no oh, i just man. didn't want, i didn't want to deal with it right so they attacked my wife while i was in jail and all this shit. so i got out of jail and i was talking to this guy named joe bernstein i think he works for the new york times now but he used to work for buzzfeed and he um was like pimping me out for a story on Lane when I got out of jail. And usually I would never. The story on who? On Lane Davis, on, oh, on the guy who oh, killed his oh, father. Okay. And so I agreed, and I got my wife to agree to cooperate on a story. And it was the very first article on BuzzFeed News. And um, I, it was pitched in a way of, like, let's tell the real story, and, you know, this will this will – like right this clear, will make your clear situation you better up, basically yeah, right yeah, yeah. this will be better for you and he came out to richmond and bought me a couple beers and talked to my wife uh and uh he wrote the story in a much different way uh and uh -huh. there's a yeah, quote I can't imagine. And, and i was like i didn't mind the hate i don't mind the hate right it doesn't you know every once in a while it might get to you but it doesn't really get to me yeah, i'm I almost mean. like the hate you know what i mean like i, I, I kind of it's kind of thrilling to be hated honestly uh, right and you know what i mean it's like a thrill that i know so many people hate me uh i like i got, I got a lot of people that like me too but it's a thrill to, to know that that many people hate you and so he wrote this line that my that my wife had said and uh she's like you know i watch alex jones i watch all this stuff and she said um, you know, I didn't know there were people out there who took everything he said seriously, right? Like, I thought it was, like, for entertainment. Uh, and they quoted her by name in the article. Uh, and people started attacking her and just, like, going crazy on her, on that line on Twitter. Oh my God. And I was the one who had convinced her to cooperate on the article. <laughs> and it basically helped break up my marriage well, i was gonna say is that the catalyst <laughs> yeah it was like the original catalyst for breaking up my marriage because like she couldn't handle it and she's a doctor now uh i don't know where i, I wouldn't even try to find out um but she was in training to be a doctor and like that's when she realized that she couldn't do the kill stream she couldn't do what i do and be a regular person you know what i mean i mean it's, um, it is true to a degree it really is it really is. Yeah, it's uh, it's when she realized uh, hit, hit her like a ton of bricks. It's like I can't, I, I can't do this and be a regular person. And um, I think that was the. It wasn't like the only reason, but like that was the original thought in her head. I think that was implanted where it was like I can't, you know, this ain't gonna work. Now other things happen later on. Of course, sure, sure. Uh, but uh, you know, <laughs> but I think that was the original thing. It's like you, you can't really be a regular person. Nick Ricada, he can't be a regular person right. anymore. Like that's no, true. Uh, it is what it's it is. True. But I mean, uh, even at, you know, and even at my level, I see that in a number of ways. And and really, you know, you're talking about like things happening at certain times for certain reasons like i we talked about last on my show that i was fired from my job or let go with a number of other people but um but let go from my job and that was when i started i just started my youtube channel but what's interesting about the the synchronicity of this is that i really think that if i had not been let go from my job that it would have been much harder for me to to cover some of the stories I've covered on YouTube and my podcast or to speak yeah. the way that I speak about certain things because especially being in academia, right? Like I was, yes. there would always be like this, this Chapel impulse. Hill, North Carolina. What's that? You went to well, Chapel Hill, right? I, I did. I taught there for a while too, but, uh, but I was actually at a, a little school in tech, uh, a college in Texas. I don't want to okay. say the name, no, but I'll just say that no, they, sorry. but I will say that they, uh, they had like 
the worst um college football championship performance that i've ever seen <laughs> oh i know that i know exactly who you're you know, about <laughs> initials i'll just say uh yes i know exactly i know exactly the school now uh so, but i, I watched that game I, I love all the people there and everything and i have definitely have big critiques of academia but nothing against the people there but but i i really felt like i really feel like now in retrospect that i just couldn't have done this youtube thing and maintained a job like that because they it, you're right you it can't. says you're, you're right you cannot be a normal person and do this you really can't uh and the film do you have a degree in film studies as well or is that just something on the side i i, I seem to remember you so might have yeah so the the official title is is english uh that's just the title of the, the degree but i specialized in, in okay film and so basically like i it sounds so pretentious to talk about this but my dissertation was on analyzing similarities between themes in earlier gothic literature like i did a lot of mary shelley right her novels and then looking at modern horror films and horror series like even the walking dead cool, actually. Yeah. so yeah so well it was it was fun uh, if you actually read the dissertation it's online it's uh it's maybe not that great but it was fun to study and so uh so yeah so i have a lot of a lot of the uh, backgrounds uh, theoretically and things that I've read relating to uh, to film. And that's what I tried to do in most of my classes when I was teaching. I taught it, almost all entry level courses. And so it was just like intro to literature, intro to film. And I got to teach students really interesting things. But what happens is you do burn out after a while. I mean, I've been doing that for years and years and years, starting back when I, I started grad school. And so I was burned out. And so it was time to do something different. It's definitely, this life is definitely less stable than that kind yes, of a life, as you know. <laughs> as I know well, yes. <laughs> yeah, but it is interesting, so. Thank God I have the fans that I have uh, who've kept me around. Yeah, uh, good they fans. tried to Look, put you, me in. You the, reached your goal, 101%. I did. Yeah, they tried to put me under uh, many times, but uh, I, have a, I have a lot of supporters who. So I who have love to me, go. So. I'm sorry, I have yeah, to go no, soon. No, but I cool. did want to. I wanted, I wanted you to, to finish it with though, something good. Well, yeah. I wanted to ask you about one thing. So I have not been keeping up so much with the situation between Rakeda and Aaron Imholtz and Kayla and revenge porn. What's going on exactly? So I was told, um, I was told by a source that, um, that, that I forget what this, who the source was now. And I wouldn't name him anyway, but, um, because I'm not a journalist, but I still try to uphold that type of thing. Um, he got, allegedly, he got sent a naked photo of um, uh, Kayla Ricada. I don't know if this is true or not. And he right, the allegation is it's yeah. by, that it was yeah, sent and by he showed it, And he showed it to Gino Bisconti, like, on air and texted it to him. And um, it's my understanding that Kayla Ricada uh, is pursuing revenge porn uh, charges against him. You may not know this about me, but I've also. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to stop too. I tread into any <laughs> problematic waters. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's public record. I have a revenge porn, no contest plea on my record. Uh, so I have a little, uh, experience with that, uh, as well. I've lived, uh, a wild a full life. life. Yes. A very full life. Uh, and, uh, it, but, let, well, me, it let me hear for, so. for Imholtz. I mean, do you think that really will constitute um, It's a misdemeanor a crime. I mean, he uh, won't go to jail for it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's not good. <laughs> I can tell you that. He'll have to hire a lawyer. Uh, He's really, but, uh, Aaron is really milking his 15 minutes. I saw it's you tweet. When is it going to end? Ever. I saw your tweet. When is it going to end? Uh, and not to advocate revenge porn. You know, of course, I played no, 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 no contest. No, no, uh, you know, I didn't plead guilty uh, for a reason. But uh, I would not advise anybody to do it. Uh, and uh, I would say... Um, that's it's really dumb um although i think some of the laws surrounding it are dumb too but i won't get into that that's another conversation but uh don't do revenge porn uh, i will say that uh because it ain't worth it even though in most states like i said it's a misdemeanor i second like that yeah, he <laughs> well aaron is uh aaron is actually is certainly having a very full 15 minutes i don't know who's going to save us but uh i guess this will just be his shtick until the case is totally resolved we'll be just talking about the ricadas yeah he i got a clip of him to play after you leave actually uh where he's talking about nick getting his kids back and it's like dude just shut the fuck up honestly um like i mean me talking about it that, that's one thing but you're a direct participant. I, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, promote your channel. You promised to do a movie night with us as well. Uh, I one will of these do a movie night. 
It'll have to be Apocalypse Now. We'll have to set up some kind of time for that. We no normally, revenge porn. No revenge porn. Uh, I've, I pled no contest. I'll just say that. I didn't plead <laughs> okay. guilty. Uh, <laughs> anyway. It is, it is. I will say, though, last thing I'll say about it. It is, it is unfortunate that something I, I read about that episode and what happened and everything. And uh, no. Oh, with me? Thing. Yeah, and it was, and it was yeah. certainly a shitty thing that uh, – you may or may not have done, but uh, but I do think that we throw around in society now the um, sexual offender label. Yeah, they liberally. try to call me that for that, even though it's not a because sexual people offense. because people equate it. The problem with it is that people equate it mostly still in their minds to it's pedophilia, like pedophile, and so when yeah. it, when there is a crime or a situation and something maybe even that's really shitty that if you did, I hope you learn from. But but it, I still don't think that should be lumped in with this other stuff. And so you know, I, I do hate that for you that that's that label is. I will say. Up. There, there was reasons for it, uh, the situation, uh, and then my lawyer was really eager to take it to trial uh, and win, and they came up to me three minutes beforehand, and they said, um, you can plead guilty and one year suspend a sentence, and you're done, or we can go in here and go to trial and see what happens. I should have took it to trial, but I said, you know what? I'll take that deal, but I won't plead guilty. I'll plead no contest, and they said, okay. And um, so three minutes, they said you have three minutes to decide. It's always like, it's always easy to look back in hindsight and, and wonder. But that's what crazy. Opinion, but, it's just crazy. But, you the know, power of the you state. don't want to wind up in prison. <laughs> right. Well, and you know, I, I was on probate, you know, there was a long story. Like, you know, I just, I ha convicted felon for that bullshit in Virginia, right already. So who knows if they want to give me some time, et cetera. Um, so it's best to just get it over with, but it's just crazy. The power the state has over you because they, they said, you have three minutes to decide. Uh, the prosecution mm -hmm. holds all the power. That's why this stuff that Nick That's talks true. about uh, resonates so much with me. Um, and it should resonate with everybody. Um, whether you're guilty, no contest, or or not guilty. Uh, the power of the state is is immense. Um, promote your stuff. we got to have you back. Yeah, I love talking hurts. to you. For some yes. reason, me and you uh, click uh, on air for some reason. Uh, but... Uh, Tell them where to find you, and we'll have you back soon. All hey, right, if you're down. so it's Colonel Colonel Kurtz ninety nine. Uh, if you don't know how to spell it, just look up a, the Apocalypse Now character. Colonel Kurtz ninety nine, all lowercase. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter. I am sort of on Rumble, but I hardly ever post there. I need to get better at that. But uh, anyway, I've got I've got an interview on Rumble with Russell Brand's ex lover, who says that uh, all this all these allegations against him are BS. So anyway, really, all right. Yeah, yeah, it's on my nice. YouTube as well. It didn't, it didn't get a ton of views, you know. The algorithm, it's just is sometimes yeah, it's just not it's working for me, or who knows, good. right? But, but yeah, I interviewed an ex-lover of his, and it was interesting. So. You would think Rumble would promote that since they got him under a deal. But, I'm new uh, though. There's, I mean, yeah. it, it's a hard hill to climb, especially at first, as you know, when you start a new channel. But, uh, but there's also stuff that I need to improve with my channel to make it seem a little more professional, and sophisticated, and get more views. So I'm still learning. I'm I, one day I will be like. The master. Well, hopefully we can keep <laughs> collaborating because uh, I, I I like you. I think the audience likes you, uh, and so hopefully we can do more programming in the future. I'll you know. I'll be back soon then, and I have you on my channel as well. Thank yes, you so much. Yes, I'm down. You're welcome, and uh, enjoy your upcoming weekend. And also, uh, we had some good moments here, especially that I'd like to clip and put clip, on my channel. That's okay, do whatever right? Whatever you'd like with okay. anything here. All right, cool. All right. Thank you so much. See y'all so later. See Thank you, later. everybody. Bye bye. Colonel. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.